Are you dealing with somebody who's just super high conflict or maybe it's just somebody who every time you see them, you feel triggered. It may be your boss. It may be a family member. It may be that person that you're going to have to see at a birthday party or at a family gathering or whatever it is. And you're just thinking, oh my God, I need a killer phrase that's going to help me diffuse that conflict. I've got the thing for you right here in this video today. All right, so today I want to help you because I know how it can be. Sometimes you just need that phrase to help you with something that's going to help you diffuse that conflict because you want to be able to respond and not react, right? You want to be able to observe and not absorb. That's the one thing that I talk about all the time, especially when you're dealing with a narcissist or a high conflict personality. And if you're new here, I want to welcome you to this channel. And if you're just returning, welcome back. I'm Rebecca Zung and I am an attorney I'm also a negotiation expert. I'm a communications expert. I'm the author of Slay the Bully, How to Negotiate with a Narcissist and When. If you haven't subscribed, I invite you to do that now. Hit that notification bell because we're here to help you transform your relationship with conflict or feeling empowered. We want to give you the right words to feeling empowered, how to transform challenging interactions in high conflict situations. If you are in a situation where you just don't even know where to begin, you're thinking, I just don't know what to do. I mean, so many times people say to me, where do I start even dealing with this high conflict personality, right? I want to give you a place to start today where you can, by the end of this video, go, okay, now I've got something concrete, some place to go. I'm going to go back to that video and I'm, I've got some tools that I can actually use that I can dive deep into and go, that's the thing. I actually feel more courageous today. I actually feel like I've got some baby steps that I can actually use because what you're doing is you're actually writing a ship over here. You're actually turning your power around. If you've been conditioned by somebody, maybe it's a boss at work. It could even be that neighbor that you don't want to have to face, right? Especially if you're an empath or you're an empathetic person and, you know, just kind of like, I just don't want to have to see that person. I want to give you those tools to make you feel a little bit better today. I always say negotiate your best life. Today's a great day to start negotiating your best life. I hope you watch all the way to the end of this video because that's what I say at the end of every single one of my videos. Today's a great day to start negotiating your best life because I feel like negotiating your best life starts with the very first negotiating that you have to do with, with yourself in the morning for your own self-worth, right? Taking back your power. And that's what I feel like we have to do a lot of times is is your own mindset. I want to give you some killer phrases today that are going to help you feel like, okay, I got something. I got something that I can start transforming those difficult situations, those difficult interactions. The very first thing you're going to have to do though, is put that invisible barrier down around you and start looking at this person as if they are a toddler having a tantrum on the floor and you are just observing them, you start observing their behavior to them as if you're watching a toddler having a tantrum on the floor. I can see that you're upset. I can see that you're angry. That's the very first thing that I tell people to do because you, you want to kind of almost take yourself out of it and not take things personally. So that's the first thing I really want you to do. You've got like this Teflon down around you, and then you've got like these Superman bullets coming off of you and or the Wonder Woman bracelets on because you've, you've got to start doing that. And then just like kind of like pretend like you're just reporting the news, looking at them. All right, so I'm going to give you the five phrases, but the first thing I want you to do is just imagine that invisible, invisible barrier is coming down around you. And the other thing I'm going to tell you before I give you the five phrases is never jade, right? So I, even though I love jade, I want you to remember because, you know, I'm half Chinese, so I do love jade, but I'm going to tell you to never jade, which is 
Never justify, argue, defend, or explain. So never jade. And I want you to put that in the comments below. Never jade, never justify, argue, defend, or explain. Because you're not going to do that. You're just going to observe their behavior to them. Phrase number one is, I understand your perspective. I understand your perspective. Here's another viewpoint. So you're acknowledging them. I hear you. I see you. I understand you. I see what you're saying. You know, anything of that nature is kind of that same sort of thing. And when you're acknowledging them and then you are introducing you, you're introducing them. I hear you. I see you. I understand you. I, I see where you're coming from, but here's another viewpoint. It especially works in a professional setting, but you can also have it be in any kind of a setting, whether you're having a conversation with your spouse, you're having a conversation with your next door neighbor, whoever it is that you're having a conversation with, it definitely works. It turns any kind of disagreement into a constructive dialogue. If somebody is raging mad, you know, you're still going to say, listen, I can see that you're angry. I can see that you're upset. We can have this conversation when you're, when you calm down. So you're definitely always going to do that no matter who it is, no matter what it is. Phrase number two is, let's work to find a solution that's going to benefit us both. No matter who it is, no matter what it is, even if you're dealing with a raging narcissist and at some point in the conversation, you know that they're never going to agree on anything, you, you're still going to fluff or favor vomit later, which is what I call it. You know, you're fluffing up their ego to ethically manipulate the manipulator because down the road, you're probably going to have to have some kind of leverage that where you're going to close in on them and use what I call their diamond level supply to come up with a particular solution to threaten a source of supply that's more important for them to keep than the supply that they're getting from jerking you around. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you need to get my free Crush My Negotiation prep worksheet at winmynegotiation.com. I will help you get started with that. It's totally free. It's a free ebook. Many people have won their entire negotiations just on that. I think oh, probably over 100,000 people have downloaded that. So go get it for free. The next one is I appreciate your input or thanks for the feedback or something like that. That's an interesting perspective. Whatever you want to say that somewhere along those lines, I need time to reflect on this. I will take that in. I will consider that. Something to that effect that makes them think that you are pondering whatever it is that they said. When you are making them think that you are taking a pause, that you are listening to their perspective, and that's all they want a lot of times. Whether or not you're actually going to do it, consider whatever it is that they're asking you to consider, it does not matter in that moment, now does it? If it's a super high pressure situation where they're like pushing on you in that moment, tensions are super red hot and you need to for them to cool down, you just need to release some of that pressure in that moment. It's sort of like one of those steam pots and you need to release that. I will consider it. Thank you for the feedback. I will I will pause. I will I will consider this. That's all you need to say in that moment. That will help you to diffuse. Does this make sense? Give me a yes in the comments below if, if this is making sense to you so far. So yes, makes sense. Give me, give me a feedback, some comments, all right? I'd love to hear what your thoughts are so far because I want you to have the power in your hands. And if you're trying to deal with this on your own, make sure that you join my free private Facebook group, Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. I want to see you in there. I want to see you getting your power back as well. Next is, you know, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Can you clarify? You know, especially if you need some clarification, ask them to give you some clarification on that. It shows that you're, you're actively listening, that you care, that you want more information. Even if you don't, so what? Make it seem like you do. Oh, get them talking. It gets a lot of times. They tell you more on their position. It gives you a little recon too. Many times I've gotten actually more information about from the other side 
because they just happen to tell me on their own. Have them talk to you about that as well. That's another one that really, really works a lot of times. It also helps to avoid misunderstandings a lot of times, especially if you can follow up with a writing. Make sure you always do that anyway. Follow up with a text, follow up with an email. Appreciated the conversation that we had today. Here's what we discussed. Here's what we agreed upon. Even if it was just a text, can you please confirm that this is what we talked about? You're going to want to do that anyway. And finally, phrase five is I respect our different opinions. You know, sometimes we're going to have to agree to disagree. You know, I would say we can disagree without being disagreeable. That was one of my favorite phrases to use, especially with opposing counsel when I was practicing law full time and I had raging narcissists as uh, opposing counsel who, oh my God, were so so disagreeable many times. And they would be attacking me personally often. And I would say, you know, we can disagree without being disagreeable. Perhaps we just need to, you know, go to court on this particular matter. You don't need to be crazy about it. Acknowledge differences. Uh, you know, apparently we're, we're not going to agree on this particular matter. That's okay. I respect your opinion. If you're in a work situation, you know, you might even want to try to find common ground you know, areas where you do agree, that often does help because a lot of times when you do find strength, you know, areas where you do agree, it does help to actually um, move things along. You find momentum as to where you do uh, agree. So that all helps. So these are five killer phrases that will diffuse any conflict and help you move your situation that could be super high conflict, super red hot, super tense, stressful, and lower the temperature, lower the conflict, lower the stress level, and make life a lot easier for you. I would love to know which ones you like, which ones you plan to use. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, make sure that you share it, make sure that you start thinking about how you can show up more powerfully as well using words that are clear, concise, confident, standing in your power with your body language, your eye contact, not allowing yourself to be somebody who is not standing in your power. And one of the ways that you can do that is apologizing a whole lot less as well. So I have a whole video on that also, and I want you to watch that video next. So that video is called Stop Saying Sorry, Say This Instead. After you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell, of course. But remember that today's a great day to start negotiating your best life. I'm Rebecca Zong. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that you're part of this community. Remember that they only win if you give in. And I will see you in that next video.